Hello everybody, I'm Nickel. Welcome to another episode of CodeCop. This is where we go over bad coding advice given in places like LinkedIn, X, or blogs, and we try to learn from it and turn it into good advice. And in this episode, I have a very interesting piece of advice because it's on one of my favorite things in C Sharp and .NET, and that is Span. If you've watched really any of my videos, you would know that. So let's see what the advice is, because I think the person has a complete and utter misunderstanding of what Span is and how it works, or they just make rage bait, shitty LinkedIn posts, but here's the code. So the person is saying, hey, we have a, a string over here. This is a longer test string for demonstration. And then you have the substring where you say, you know, start index 10 and get five characters. And then you have the same thing, but this time we we'll use a read only span of type character, which can represent a string. And I put it in air quotes because it doesn't really represent a string, but you can see we do a span and the a span method has an overload that does the exact same thing as the substring, but it returns a read only span. Now we'll see exactly what that does in code, but I'm going to add more context, which is I'm not using substring anymore. It is slow. You heard it here. Substring is slow. Never use it. It's bad. We should be using it. Read only span. Span is a stack allocated type that can point to contiguous memory regions representing slices of arrays, strings, or unmanaged memory. It provides the ability to work with a slice of data without allocating new memory for the slice. This is particularly useful for strings because strings are immutable in dot .NET, key advantage of span, reduces allocation, since span can refer to a portion of an array or string, which both are, by the way, reference types, uh, there is no need to create any new substrings or array segments when you only need to work with a part of the data, and it's also more memory efficient, because a span enables more efficient memory by allowing operations and slices of data without duplicating the underlying data structures. Just the underlying data is what they're trying to say. Versatility span can be used with any type of contiguous memory, not just arrays and strings. Yeah, but it's not more versatile. Spans restrict you in many ways, especially read-only spans, but whatever, that's the context. Now, what's the performance boost by using this? Well, it's almost too good to be true. You go from 2 nanoseconds and 32 bytes of memory to 0.01 nanoseconds, which is like in the region of immeasurable and no memory because, you know, span is, especially read-only span, it's stack allocated, it's not going to allocate any memory on the heap. However, this person is comparing these AirPods and this pair of scissors. It's as common of a comparison as these two things. It is literally pointless. It's as if you're comparing a list or an array to an enumerable. You, you can't compare them because in many ways they're very fundamentally different. Let's take a look at the code. So I've brought in the code from the demo and you have the use substring method which uses substring and the other one that uses the span. I just want to show you that both methods will return the exact same data uh, to show you that they work the same. So I'm going to say use substring and represent the string and then I'm going to do the same with the use span method. Oh, it does not compile. Of course it doesn't, because it is not a string. It is a read-only span. The ability to get something down to a read-only span and have methods accept a read-only span is that you can prevent some of the work being done on a string. But when you eventually need the string, you need to represent the string, you have to allocate it. It can't just stay in the stack as characters. You have to build it and return it. So the only way to do this here without going into unsafe stuff is of you saying to string. And yeah, in that case, if I just run it, we're going to get the exact same thing. But it has nothing to do with being more efficient. These are fundamentally different. What I have here, I'm just going to quickly comment everything out uh, and I'm going to say benchmark runner dot run benchmarks. And I'm going to run the benchmarks in a second, but I want to show you what I have is the following. I put the exact same code in the benchmarks. I just want to for now reproduce the performance boost that this person has. So I'm just going to let this run and see what we get back. So we have the results. Let's take a look at what we have. So again, no surprise. It's actually even more egregious. You have the 2.1 nanoseconds and then the 0 0.0000 immeasurable levels of it's as if I'm not really testing for anything here. It's pointless. I just want to bring a few more methods over here to show you how it would really work if you were to return these methods in different ways. I'm going to also use the span string, but I'm going to use a span and then to string it because eventually you need the string. And that's really what you're comparing if you want to be 
more accurate. So let's see what substring do read only span does. And in fact, I'm going to move it over here so we can compare it one after the other. And then in the other case, we have both span, but also span represented as a string. So let's just run this and see where we are with more realistic data, because eventually you will need that string. The only reason to have the comparison is if that read-only span needs to be further processed later. But even if you do that, eventually you need to extract something out of that string. And the best case scenario for something like this to really, really get some value out of it is if that string is representing a value type like a GUID or maybe an integer, and you're going to do int dot pause on that read-only span, and these methods have read-only span overloads, so you can get a big benefit of performance there. But if your point is eventually I'm going to need a string, so when I represent the string, you're going to need a string. You're going to have to allocate that type. Spans are not a thing that can be used everywhere. If it could, everyone would be using spans everywhere, and we wouldn't have strings anymore. All right, so results are back, and as you can see, we go from that 2.3 nanosecond to a 1.85 nanosecond. Now, do I think this is sort of a real measurable difference between these two? It's not really. Um, I mean, yeah, you're returning a read-only span, but this is still a string implicitly converted into a read-only span. So this might as well be sort of the same performance. Then you have the fake read-only span thing over here, which is just sort of casting it into read-only span. And then you have the as span to string, which as you can see, means you're going to end up with a significantly worse performing conversion than they're just using the use substring. So if you just want to use the substring method and return a string, just do that. This is meaningless unless you do any further processing. And if you don't do any further processing, as you can see, you end up with a quite slower, again, it's nanoseconds, it doesn't really matter. But even in that context, you end up with a significantly slower thing. And then this is just fake bullshit. It doesn't really matter. Like, come on, don't just make pointless content just to post something at least measure and back what you have to say with measurable claims and compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. That's what I had to say. I think it's a ridiculous post. I don't understand the meaning out of it. And don't believe everything you see on places like LinkedIn. And even if you do, at least download the code, write the code and test for yourself in your own context and your own application. Don't just believe what you see. But now I want to know from you, do you even use Span that much? I know I do quite a bit and stack a lot quite a bit. I really hope at some point to make more content on Span. And if you want to see that, leave a comment down below. But are you using it? Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.